I've got the most fascinating person today. He has had consequences from taking prednisone that I have never seen before on his spine. So welcome Lambros to Dr. Megan with Prednisone Pharmacist show. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you, Dr. Megan. Thank yes. you for all the wonderful things you've been doing for the prednisone community. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. All right. So I told them you're fascinating. So tell us, why did you start taking prednisone? And like, how long have you been on it? Well, um, I really never heard of prednisone before. I've heard of steroids and the media lets you think that steroids are really bad and so on and so forth. But when I had asked about prednisone, I was told that it was not the type of steroids that uh, that are the ones you hear about the media that they're used many times for allergic reactions and uh, if you get pneumonia or you get sick or something. And I heard of prednisone. I, I didn't know that in late 2016, I had broken my neck and I was in really, really good shape. And the muscles in my neck kind of held everything together. One morning I woke up, I couldn't move my left arm at all. And I went to the hospital thinking I was having a stroke at 40, 47 years old or whatever I was at the time. And they told me that the, the disc at C3 and C4, that the disc was moving backwards and severing my spinal cord and I needed emergency surgery. So I did the emergency surgery and it was a success for the most part because I got my left arm back, but I had gotten really bad pain in both of my shoulders, radiating down to my arms. And I went for a second surgery in 2020 at the height of the COVID situation. And that surgery was a complete disaster because I lost use of most of the use of my right arm. And at the time, they told me that I should stay on prednisone and take 60 milligrams of prednisone every day, and that it would reduce the inflammation in my spinal cord being irritated in such a surgery. And uh, then the doctor had gotten up and moved to Texas. And it was very hard to find a new doctor, a new surgeon, a new neurosurgeon during the middle of the COVID scare. So that's when I started the prednisone um, was it started with pneumonia in 2016. They kept me on low doses, I believe like 16 or 17 milligrams of prednisone during my first surgery for a few months. And then in 2020, I went on 60 milligrams of prednisone daily. Oh my goodness. So you were on 60 a day for a long time because you couldn't find a doctor to replace the one who'd prescribed it. Is that right? Correct. And, and all the doctors after that, all the general practitioners and primary care physician doctors followed the instructions that the surgeon laid down, which was for me to stay on the, uh, to stay on the 60 milligrams of prednisone. And nobody had told me to take vitamin D and to take calcium carbonate. And oh, what should be known, Dr. Megan, is that I went for a special test called a, a bone density test, a DEXA scan. And the DEXA scan revealed that I was tolerating the prednisone very, very well. I was having no side effects from the prednisone at all. My blood sugar did not go up and I did not get diabetes, thankfully. And my uh, bone density test came back beautiful. And my blood pressure only went up a little bit. So according to all the doctors, I was tolerating prednisone very, very well. But what I didn't know is if, if you have like the typical arthritis found in an active 50-year-old or 45-year-old, mm -hmm. if you have that, the typical amount of arthritis, arthritis can be taken by the DEXA scan as a false positive test. Positive meaning giving you positive, uh, a positive score when you're really not. What? That's crazy. So you did this DEXA scan. It made it look like you were doing great, but because you had arthritis, it was a false positive. Is that what you're saying? That Absolutely. It looked good, but it was actually false. 
Oh my goodness. And then yeah. I, like what you tell about the clinical inertia, like the one doctor started it and then nobody was willing to stop it. Right. No one was willing to undo what he had done as far as the dose Correct. of prednisone. Wow. Correct. Everybody was afraid because of my spinal cord injuries <laughs> and what I had going on. They were afraid to stop it. Wow. And so here you are, your spine has been injured and now you're on prednisone and everybody thinks your spine is otherwise fine. Your bone density is fine. And then what happened next? Then, um, then my life fell apart completely, completely fell apart. Um, I had gone to Cornell in Manhattan, uh, Real Cornell Medical Center, which is one of the top hospitals in the, on the planet. Yeah. And I'd gotten some alternative therapies in regards to my, uh, my C5 palsy that I acquired from the second surgeon slipping with the drill and hitting my cord with the drill. And that was a disaster. So they were working on my right arm and all that stuff. And then what had happened is I had gone home I bent over to pick up my TV remote that was on the floor and I felt like I pulled a muscle. So I stayed home the next several days and I was like, I'm going to arrest this muscle because it hurts really, really bad. Well, unbelievably, instead of that muscle feeling better when I rested, that muscle wasn't a muscle. It was my T6, my thoracic six in my spine it had shattered. Oh my God. From simply bending over to pick up the remote and bending forward. Just bending over. Just, like just bending a, just over. The simple act of bending over to pick up a TV remote was enough to shatter one of the bones in your spine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. And I didn't know this. So I went to Cornell, back to Cornell, and they said, I don't know what's happening. I, I feel I was in excruciating pain. I mean, oh my Lord, pain that I, I could not imagine that a human being could endure that's how bad shattering your vertebrae feels and the pressure that it puts on your spinal cord as well so this is where it gets interesting i basically was in cornell and at the time i uh all this had happened with with my vertebrae shattering they went to do a, a kyphoplasty on the on their vertebrae. And what ends up happening is that that vertebrae ends up disintegrating even more. Oh. And this time a piece of shrapnel from the vertebrae is leaning right up against my cord. I believe you might have that picture. So um, at that time, as I'm just in the hospital, my vertebrae start to systematically disintegrate and, and just crumble like paper. And I was in the hospital and I tried to tell one of the doctors that were there treating me, I said, listen, I got to get out of here. I was talking to my endocrinologist that I had about starting Forteo. And I got to say, anybody that's on prednisone, Forteo and that medication could be whether you live or die or make it or break it in your future. Because all the medicines out there like false max, um, those are pills and they're very inexpensive, but the problem is their side effects. And this is what a lot of doctors don't know. A lot of general practitioners, especially, is that if you have any dental issues, the false max will call would cause necrosis of your jaw. So it'll help with osteoporosis, which I have full-blown osteoporosis right now. It's almost like having cancer to some degree because you just systematically disintegrate. And that's what's happening to me right now. Um, well, after um, Dr. M McCarty, McCarthy over, uh, his name was Dr. Gwen McCarthy, I believe. Or Lynn, Lynn McCarthy. He basically wouldn't touch me. Uh, and Dr. Daniel Rue, he's a 
arguably one of the best neck surgeons on, in the world, they wouldn't touch me. They basically left me for dead. They were like, listen, sorry, there's nothing we can do for you. And then luckily through my dear friend, Rob Boyens, he found me Dr. Um, Dr. Baum uh, in Manhattan, uh, a wonderful, wonderful human being. And he said, Lambros, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make you better. And he promised me, and uh, the prednisone messes with your brain as well. I don't know if anybody's ever had the experience of what prednisone does to you. It basically makes you a raving lunatic. It, it brings up aspects of your personality that you never knew you had. It, it, it can make you selfish. It can make, it just basically makes you a, a raving lunatic. And when you're coming down off of prednisone, what makes it even worse, unfortunately, is your blood pressure will tank. And doctors are afraid to lower you. Like right now, I'm at eight milligrams a day, where I should be off it completely. But every time I go down even so much as one milligram, my blood pressure drops dangerously, dangerously low. I'm talking about like, like 50 over 40 or some crazy numbers like that that I've, I've gotten. Wow. So now, after like all of this time, you're still on prednisone. And you can't get off because now your body is unable to compensate the blood pressure. And that's either a sign of withdrawals or a sign of adrenal insufficiency. And it's hard to tell, but oh my goodness, you are <laughs> like, you're still on this bone crushing drug. And okay. So you found well, a surgeon. Something, well, there's something I need to add, Dr. Uh, Dr. Megan. Uh, being through all these horrific surgeries uh like the last surgery they fused the base of my skull all the way down to t10 in my lower back so i can no longer move my head left right or up or down anymore it, it makes all these muscles over here ridiculously tense it causes all kinds of issues because now you can no longer move your head oh wow. and um i i gotta tell you prednisone uh as far as prednisone goes it's easier to get off a opioids and pain medication it's easier to stop that than it is to stop prednisone uh, yeah and you can speak from experience on that absolutely it's wow. easier to stop pain medication than it is to stop prednisone that is that is quite a statement and i it's not the first time i've been told that i i personally know i have experience with the opioid addiction so i wouldn't know how hard it is to get off of that but I had to go through prednisone tapering. And so I didn't go through terrible withdrawals, thankfully, but so many people do. So now you're still struggling getting off of prednisone, but I want to go back to your surgery. So they, they fused from your skull all the way, basically to your tailbone, right? Oh, uh, no, right before my, like in my right lower, lower back. Uh-huh. And so you're stuck in this permanent upright in this yeah, position. I can't bend over. I mean, I can bend over from T10 lower in my hip. Like Thank but not like this, right? Correct. Like no longer. Wow. So did they, like these surgeons, did they say, oh yeah, that's from the prednisone or did they have any other reasons why? Without a shadow of a doubt. And if it wasn't for Forteo to work as advertised, thank God that my when the doctor went in there, he told me there's a chance that we might not be able to operate on you. There's a chance. Like he waited. Oh, God help me. Uh, he, I was supposed to get the surgery in March and I did not get it until July because the doctor was trying to rehabilitate me a little bit more. And I lost 100 pounds. Um, so basically, I blew up like a balloon from the prednisone with full. Um, full symptoms of, of uh what do you call that again like the moon uh, face and the belly and yeah. everything the cushings so yeah full-blown cushing syndrome uh so i went from a 230 pound muscle bound you know naturally and i was working out as well healthy five foot nine beast to a five foot two five foot three 140 pound thing that's what Lost, I call it. like seven inches in height yes from the with pain. all of the spinal compression right 
Right. And now that we took care of my upper back, but if we take care of my lower back, which is cause I had mild scoliosis growing up and it went from a mild case to a ridiculous case of my spine turning into a big S and uh, my right leg is two and a half inches shorter than my left leg from and also too i i have to tell you that prednisone also wiped out uh both of my knees with my right one now needing in dire need of replacement which i'm afraid to go for the surgery recovering from the spinal surgery i'm still recovering from it and um and the side effects that i have from it dr megan i shared with you the video of the tell us about the that video that is so you guys it's stunning okay tell us how did that happen who recorded it what is the situation well what it happened is um dr finney george uh he's a plastic surgeon that was closing me up during my surgery with dr baum on july 6th and another wonderful human being uh, i highly recommend dr baum at Lenox Hill Hospital, and he has uh, also here in Staten Island, he has on uh, Tuesdays, he comes down here. And Dr. Finney George is an incredible human being as well. Two guys I couldn't say nice things, nice enough things about uh, what had happened is, um, when after the surgery, when I was in recovery at Glen Cove Hospital in Long Island, I was doing uh, an exercise like this, lifting up a bar, uh, a piece of wood going into the grooves. And all of a sudden I felt the pinch in my back. And then over the course of a week and a half, the little bit of movement in my back, the little anomaly in my back started moving all the way up to the top. So my left and right latissimus dorsi are affected and my lower middle and upper trapezius muscle as well as affected. Uh, they don't know exactly. Here we have the best surgeons in the world, the best doctors in the world, and they can't make heads or tails. I never seen before what I have going on. So anybody that might have some input, it would be very well appreciated. If anybody's ever seen what I have going on, I'm sure Dr. Megan's going to post it. Yeah. Okay. So it, what I remember seeing in this video is like your back is like the muscles are just going like this. And so are, are you saying that they think that the muscles are no longer like attached to the bone where they're supposed to be? Is that what it sounds like? That's what they're thinking. That, that's what they're thinking. That, uh, and since the surgery was so major, they're thinking that I won't survive going back in to try to fix it. So right now my head, my neck is a little tilted forward, too forward. So all the muscles, ligaments, tendons are going berserk. And it makes it difficult to eat because all these muscles are in a hyper state of sens the hyper sensitivity and they're all locked up and causing pain. Um, and as far as the rest of what I have going on with my body right now, um, I have to do the replacement of my right knee. I'm sure my left knee is going to follow after that. Um, it's just a complete utter disaster, Dr. Megan. So it sounds like prednisone and all of the complications has really destroyed your life. Like you went Without from this strong, capable person and now you're still recovering and still stuck on prednisone. So what would you say to somebody who's like, my doctor prescribed prednisone, should I take it? Well, what I recommend that you do is if you must take prednisone due to, due to uh, like prednisone could be a life-saving drug or it could be a silent murderer, um, painful, slow and painful murderer. Um, if you have to take it for a few days, fine, great, take it for a few days. Because another thing is when people tape over prednisone, they think that it's over the course of a week, but that's not true, Dr. Megan. Basically, you're taking your first dose the first and second day and then after that you need a week to get off it so that's how much of an insidious insidious of a drug that prednisone is yeah so you'd say it depends on what you're kind of taking it for right like because it can be a miracle 
But what if it's like for poison ivy? Like you could get over poison ivy without prednisone. Well, to be quite honest with you, what's that? Should people take it? Again, I still think um, that nobody else in recent times has had this problem. Like my, my pain management doctor, who's also an incredible human being, uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Stilwell, here in Staten Island, wonderful, wonderful person. Basically, uh, she's been with me from the beginning of this, uh, from when even before I got the injury. Uh, but basically, well, the point that I was driving at is that uh, even with the best surgeons in the world and the most renowned minds in the medical community can't make heads or tails of what I have going on. Yeah. So it's either what I, uh, what we were saying about the latissimus dorsi and the trapezius muscle or the other chance is my kyphosis was so bad that where my muscles were instantly straightened overnight that they, that they need to be shrunken and, and, and brought to play, uh, brought to the place where they belong. And that's been next to impossible because again, I'm still in the prednisone. So the prednisone is definitely a catch-22 drug. Yeah, so. exactly. It is a catch-22 drug. Like it saved my life. I am here today. I didn't bleed to death because of prednisone. You're here today. Like, I don't know what would have happened with the inflammation in your spine if you hadn't had it, but like, what do you wish, like in the most ideal situation, you had the injury, how could it have gone better? Like how would this situation have worked out differently? Do you think if people had done something differently? Well, unfortunately in today's world, you need the uh, endocrinologist, go to endocrinologist. You need, um, Whatever medication it was, you needed some of it. You'd call the company, then they'd, they'd make some sort of network you'd deliver to you. And so it's it's been a horrific situation, a real horrific one. Yeah. At best. Yeah. Oh, I mean, completely horrific. Like having your whole spine fused. Like you only hear of people like having two, two or maybe three spi spinal fusions, and it's like. You have a bar all the way down your spine. That is stunning. And I mean, it was really desperate measures. One thing I still don't really know because I'm not a surgeon is, did they have to cut open your whole back or did they just cut open the top and the bottom and put it like through? How did they do that? Oof. <laughs> Basically what happens when you uh, do that with, uh, it has to be, one continuous fusion. So I have these very long titanium alloy bars that run up from T10 all the way up to the occiput of my skull. Now, what that is, I've been having massive tension headaches, um, migraines, you name it. I'm still alive, but basically incapacitated to every level possible. Yeah. So so how, like, how did they cut it? Like, did they cut all the way down or just at the top? No, no, no. Okay. Um, basically, a surgery like this is almost never done. It is so risky. And so it was a, basically, I believe, a 13-hour surgery. Um, so you get put out for quite a while and they put down face forward. Uh, it's a very, very tedious operation at best. And Dr. Baum, unfortunately, had to remove all the other stuff that the previous doctor had done. So it was a big job. It was a very big job. And so you just have like the wound at your neck area? Is that where? No, it goes from the base of my skull, actually, a little, actually, I'd say from the top middle of my head all the way down to like the backside of my belly button, where my belly button is. And so, so they, had, there, they had to cut all of that? I had to cut all of that open, drill out the, uh, from the previous surgeon and he got it complete nightmare. Wow. Complete. Oh, so that, like you had to recover 
like you couldn't lie down very well, right? For such a massive back yeah. surgery. Right. Even now I can't lay fully flat on the bed. I have a, a bed lift that lifts the bed up to, uh, you know, to help you sit up or to put your legs up or whatnot. And thank God I have this bed because without it, I'm regulated to sitting in a wheelchair or a, a rollator to go to sleep. And that's a, a complete mess, complete yeah. mess. So how did you recover? Like from that initial surgery, like, were you on the side or how did, like, how did you just sleep alone? Well, the thing, the thing is the doctor that I had had was the uh, head neurosurgeon at, um, uh, at, at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital. That's where I got the first surgery done. So basically, uh, he, John Caridi was his name. Uh, from what I hear, he's back in Manhattan, so watch out for him. But in any case, uh, because okay. the operation that he had done where he had damaged my nerve, uh, that during that surgery as well, when he did the top screws at C2 and three and four, I believe, the screws had ripped out on one side out of the bone. Oh and on God. the other side, the rods bent. So I was just lucky to stab myself in the brain or fall down the wrong way and really get hurt. So it was a really bad situation, Dr. Megan. Yeah. So what is your best advice to other people who have to take high-dose prednisone? What do you think people who are stuck on high dose prednisone should do? First thing they should do is alert your primary care physician, find the, the best endocrinologist that you could. And um, anybody feels free to call me. I'm, I'm more than open to just, just you know helping out and paying forward all the nice things that people have done for me. But if you're on high dose prednisone, you could safely do if let's say you're above 60 milligrams, you can go down five milligrams. Taper down with your primary care physician, your endocrinologist. Get down, and there is no safe level of prednisone for, from what I've come to know. So some people that are asthmatics and some people that have uh, Crohn's disease and other, um, and they have other, um, uh, what's the, What's that that I'm looking to? The disease like that arthritis. Yes, autoimmune disorders. Anybody with mm -hmm. autoimmune disorders that has to stay on it, try to stay on like five milligrams max. Try to make five milligrams be your your high point. And if you're a, a female or an older male, please make sure to take um, a, a bone strengthening medication like Forteo, or um, uh, what's the other one? I forgot the other one that, that was just recently, it was made available to women, but it wasn't made available to men. Uh, but now it is, but I know the Forteo works, works great. It saved my life because the doctor was able to go in there and actually get my bones in six months, my bones healthy enough to do the surgery safely on me. Uh, because if they try to do this surgery six months earlier, the bones would have been so brittle that they either would have cracked into pieces and definitely severing my spinal cord. Or, um, I mean, that, that's about it. You really don't have much of a choice. You have to get off the medication, stay close to your endocrinologist and your primary care physician, taper slowly. And um, I was looking forward to giving some of your products a shot because I know that. Can you tell me about your products, Doc? Yeah, I'd love to. So I, I don't want anyone else to have to go through what you've gone through, like with just what prednisone can do with crushing your bones, with thinning them, with making them so that they can't do their job, that just the simple act of bending over to pick up a TV remote is enough to break a bone. <laughs> like, I don't want that to happen to anybody. And so I compiled Neutronized Zone and it is the first and only supplement for people on prednisone. And what I've got in here is not only ingredients that help with bone, and I'll go through those first, but I also have ingredients that help with the other top concerns of people on prednisone. So first for the bone, I've got the two bottles. And what's important about that 
is if you are taking calcium, which is super important for your bones, right? You can only absorb 500 milligrams at a time. And so you have to take at least a thousand milligrams, if not more, probably 1200 milligrams of calcium per day, but your body can only use 500 at a time. So you have to take it in two separate doses. And so that's why I have two separate bottles. So I've got this one that you take in the morning and then this one that you take at bedtime. And so together you get the calcium in two separate doses and but if we only take calcium, what can happen is a hardening of our arteries. And I was just going to say that. Yeah, because the calcium that. is just floating around in your blood and doesn't have anywhere to go. So you also need to give it vitamin D, which is in here, and vitamin K2 and magnesium. The three of those together help the calcium leave the blood system and go into the bones and deposit and strengthen your bones. So if you are taking something and it doesn't have those three ingredients, then you need to find something better. And that's why I invented this. So those three are super important. Um, and in fact, the doctors who prescribe prednisone the most know that the osteoporosis from prednisone is a permanent irreversible and potentially tragic and life-threatening complication of taking prednisone. And so they created a guideline called the glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis guidelines. And in that they recommend calcium and vitamin D at the very least. So this isn't just me, this isn't just you. This is the doctors who prescribe prednisone the most say everyone on prednisone should be taking calcium and vitamin D, and they give the exact amounts you should be taking. Or you can just be simply taking this and that's what you need. Then I have those bone building supporting ingredients. Any questions about those ingredients so far, Lambros? No, no, you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, uh, unfortunately for me, I have to take all those medications separately. So I didn't, I wasn't aware of your product um not fully aware of it till now and i really appreciate you going out of your way and explaining everything to me um right now i take calcium carbonate uh and unfortunately you can get that simply in tums you uh you, they just give you if you're in a facility or you're in a hospital they'll give you tums every day three times a day but unfortunately it also has aluminum oxide and other medications that cause horrific constipation. So, you know, it, it's injury to insult or insult to injury, I'd, I'd say. So uh, basically um, it's really good that you made these, these med, uh, medications, supplements, whatever you'd like to call them, but I, I call them medications because actually fixed condition uh more so than let's say just plain old vitamins in the combination and you definitely made it simpler for me if yeah. i was to get your product yeah and what else do you have yeah so i've got the calcium and vitamin d and vi vitamin k and magnesium those all help with the bones magnesium also helps with a ton of other things so a lot of people on the prednisone like you mentioned it makes you crazy. It makes you feel like up and down way more than you normally cranky, just your, your personality changes. Right. And one of those reasons is because we have loss of magnesium and a loss of our calming hormones. And so I include magnesium glycinate in here and it is the glycine is one of your calming amino acid neurotransmitters that helps you feel calm. So we have the magnesium and the glycinate together are helping you feel calm and more like your own personality again. So I've got that. And then I have ingredients like melatonin that help you sleep at night because prednisone is causing um, us to have less of our circadian rhythm. So when the sun goes up, we have cortisol. And when the sun goes down, we have melatonin and it's the cycle that has to go if we're going to get restful sleep and feel healthy. And when we're on prednisone, instead of just being this little circle, it's this zoom. 
And that makes the melatonin not happen like it's supposed to. So this melatonin helps you sleep, fall asleep, sleep restfully through the night and not have as many nightmares and things like that. So I include the melatonin in the bedtime bottle right here. So together you have a, a happy mood and more restful sleep. So we've got that. And then the third most important thing people are concerned about when it comes to prednisone is the hunger cravings and the weight gain and the moon phase, all of those complications of how prednisone is a glucocorticoid, glucose like sugar. And one thing that I didn't know as a pharmacist is that chromium is this metal mineral that our body uses with insulin to break down and use the sugar properly. And if the chromium's not there, the insulin and the sugar can't do their jobs properly. And so we get high blood sugars. We get hunger cravings. Like you can eat the legs off of the kitchen table. We get hangry, cranky. I just want to eat. I don't care about anything else. Just get out of my way. I need to eat right now. Right? Like all of those things leading to the moon face, leading to the weight gain, the belly, all of those complications. It can even lead to diabetes and all of the complications of that. So I give back the chromium in here. And that's one of my very favorite ingredients because I use a high dose that's still appropriate for everybody, but a higher dose than you see in most supplements. And what's amazing is there's actually um, research, like scientific art research about chromium, like hundreds of them showing that chromium not only helps with having a stable blood sugar, it also helps with your weight. And in specific, specifically, it's not just any weight, it's the fat weight that it's targeting that when you take chromium, instead of losing more muscle, which prednisone is already causing, it's helping you lose the fat instead of the muscle. So you put all that together and you're getting your bones supported. You're getting your sleep supported and you're getting your weight supported so that you can combat the top side effects of prednisone and feel like yourself again. It sounds great. Awesome. So yeah, so you can find it at Nutrinize.com and you get all the nutrients you need in these two bottles and you just take two in the morning with your prednisone dose and two at bedtime when you're getting ready to go to bed and then you're set. You don't have to worry about all of those complications nearly as much. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Lambros. It's been a privilege to hear your story today. So what, what are your last words of advice for other people struggling with prednisone side effects? Well, I mean, there's a lot more to my story and uh, maybe we could find a way to share it and uh, some more and depending on what the response is to this and how they, uh, you know, how if people find it helpful or not. But the to know about the DEXA scan was a very important issue. To know that your blood pressure may not necessarily go up. So the three markers, the three clinical markers that they use is blood pressure, blood sugar, and DEXA scan. I passed all three of them with flying colors. So that led to me continuing on the high dose of steroids. You just didn't say, yeah, here's a box of steroids, have a nice day. The, the, but, but the clin clinical methodology doesn't always mean that it's gonna be accurate. Um, and that, and you know, you'd hate to be the anomaly such as I am. Uh, one note worth mentioning is that my uh, doctor, my pain management doctor told me that when she was in, and my, and my uh, primary care physician told me, <clears throat> excuse me, that when they were in training, which was like the tail end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, they told me that when they were in school, they were told about prednisone side effects. They were told about prednisone poisoning. That's basically what I have is prednisone poisoning. Yeah. Which is insane to think about. Um, but in any event, uh, they were told about that in school. 
in medical school. Prednisone is not a rare drug, and what it's lab, it's on label and off label uses vary. Like doctor can use from a bee sting to an allergic reaction to something else to a pneumonia and and getting your immune system breaking the chain so you really don't get sick sick. I mean, like whatever. With the prednisone, it also masks a lot of uh, sicknesses. So like you can have a, a fever and not realize it. Uh, you can have issues and you, you think, oh, you know what? I'm just tired. Uh, my leg is just tired. Or this is, and, and, and to begin with the, um, to begin with the basics, but then you pass all, everything else with flying colors and you end up in a position like me where, you know, at 50 years old, my body should not be the way that it is until I hit my 90s. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's terrible. Like if I don't, if I don't, like, if I wore the same clothes as an 90-year-old person in here and walked down the hall with no, let's say, a shaved head, they would not recognize the difference. They wouldn't have the mental ability. Turn his own toast to you. Do you have the ability to get toasted? <laughs> That's right. It really does toast you. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Was there more about your story you want to share right now? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Doc. Um, another another thing worth mentioning is that, uh, I mean, we touched upon the mental issues earlier, but it's not just mental. Uh, lastly, what I would like to add is, again, I'm begging anybody out there, please get off this drug as fast as you can. Be on top of the, the blood sugar, be on top of the, the other side effects of this medication. That is some great advice for sure. So thank you for sharing your time today, for sharing your stunning story, what prednisone has done to you. It, like you said, you were a 47 year old, otherwise a healthy person. And now you act like you look like you're 90. It's, it's stunning how it can age us so quickly, right? Yes, my, my, my arms are a mess. I mean, they're like twigs compared to what they were like. Um, it's, it's, it's been terrible. It's been terrible to say the least. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist. And we'll catch you later, Lambros. God bless you, Dr. Megan. Thank you for all you're doing for us. Thank you. You're welcome.